Hello, my yarn-loving friends. Welcome to the Ziovo Studio Buzz podcast. I am Doug, and I'm coming to you from the beautiful desert of New Mexico, where it is cold, but no snow in sight. I think it's freezing, but probably going to warm up throughout the day. I am ready to do this. I'm ready. I don't know. Am I ever ready for Christmas? I don't know. I think I am. I have today my one of my favorite Christmas mugs with a zip of latte, the last bit. I have my beautiful head thingy, but when I put it on because it's my favorite, look at this. <laughs> Dude, get your act together. Stand up for your rights. <laughs> Ah, well, okay. Oh, yes. And one more thing to get you in the spirit. Oh, not also the earrings, of course, but also everybody's and my favorite Christmas pants because we all love the Grinch. And um, if you know my son, shh, don't tell him. I got him a pair of Grinch pants for Christmas. <laughs> Okay, let's have a sip of coffee. A latte, that is, and let's get started. I know most of you are here for all the yarny and knitting and such content, but for the fountain pen lovers, I did want to tell you one thing right in the beginning of the video because I will otherwise forget. I wanted to show you the last new pen that I got, uh, probably in October, because it was on sale, and I thought the price was good, and I love this design. It's a Conklin All-American in orange as a demonstrator, which means it's transparent. However, yeah, it has a bee nib. And I have to say, it was a little bit of a disappointment in regards to the ink flow. It does, you know how sometimes you write, you wanna write a whole page and then you gotta prime the feed. So that's what happens with this guy occasionally. I still love it, I still use it. I am on the lookout for the perfect color ink that is very flowy and that will not disappoint in this combination. Right now I have Red Robin in there from Diamine Inkvent of last year that I won in a giveaway here on YouTube. Lucky me, Red Robin. Um, yes, and but I'm showing you this pen because a few people have asked me, are you going to get a new pen? Are you going to get ink? No. Who am I? I know. I'm Mrs. New Pen, queen of new pens. But I don't know. This year for Christmas, I felt like eh, I have all the pens I want. I have what I need. I mean, I wouldn't cry if I got a new pen, but... Um, I'm, I'm happy with what I have, so you know, no no wishes here. My husband keeps asking, asking, what do you want for Christmas? And I'm like, nothing. I have everything I want. That's a good thing, right? I'd rather make our kids happy and get them some things that they will enjoy. But to get on with this show about knitting, I wanted to start off by talking about two things that I have finished in the past weeks and that I have never talked about. Sorry, you're probably thinking, hmm, what came, became of that? Or you're like me and you forget that I have talked about it. <laughs> that can happen, right? So one of them was a pair of socks 
that was shipped together with the sweater for my brother. I sent them together in the same package and then I had my brother send it on to my friend, um, Dick. And Dick sent me a photo because I asked for it and he allowed me to put it on here. He's this handsome dude, seriously. Um, and I know you will agree. And yeah, I just love the photo, love that he wears them, love that they fit him. And I really think he enjoys them. And they're double knit socks, so hopefully they're going to last him for a while. That's the socks. Dick, if you watch the English podcast, I don't know, but if you do, hey, Merry Christmas. And um, my brother got the sweater and yes, it was, it, b believe it or not, it arrived on the day of his birthday. Do you know that there was an angel in heaven watching over that package? It makes me all teary because it was such a special project. I mean, I could, I told him I used yarn that our mother touched, her hands touched, went that, I used that yarn and it went into his sweater. And um, that that was so, so, so special. And I asked him also for a few pictures and he sent me some, he did a super nice garden outside photo session for me and for you. He graciously also allowed me to uh, put them in the podcast and he's also a really handsome dude. So, um, so happy um, that I have these uh, guys um, that allowed me to um, show you all the photos. That was that. Then, that was all in November already. The next big thing that ended in the meantime was the Duke Mania 2022. I will also put in some photos here. I started this because I had the studio tour open house here as a part of a neighborhood studio tour, the High Desert Studio Tour here in Albuquerque. And it, I had a lot of guests, I had a lot of visitors. People were happy to shop either for yarn or for the fingerless mitts or bags. and. I am really grateful for everyone who visited and for everyone who shopped and for everybody who hung out and chatted and had a cookie with us and a hot um, apple cider. It was a very fun event and I love sharing that 
with local artists Laura and Sarah, who are both on Instagram. If you're both, uh, if you're on Instagram, um, check them out um, with their beautiful accounts of their amazing work. We had a great day together. We haven't been able to do this in two years, so it was really special to come together. We've been the dream team in the past already, and um, yeah, we were excited to to do it again, and um, we just work well together i think and um laura always brings yummy soup yes and you may or may not remember that i planned to make a sweater with crochet sleeves and i wanted to wear the sweater on the day of the studio tour <laughs> where to start I finished the sweater, but it did not fit me in a way that made me feel good about myself. And so I ended up not wearing it for the studio tour. It was on display here and um, I will show you the sweater and I will tell you everything that went wrong. I used a pattern in an old magazine. I talked about it at length in previous um, episodes, but I need to tell you that it is a very, very basic pattern. That's all you need to know. Just it's German in a German magazine. It's only for one size. And um, I had to change a bunch of stuff because I, wanted to use different yarn, different, um, different everything. <laughs> and I, yeah, let me just show you what I'm talking about. And then I'll tell you about, tell you more about what happened. You will probably already see that it looks small. And yes, that's what happened. It was, this is a short sweater, what I'm wearing today. And this was definitely too short for me, for my comfort. And I, I thought it was gonna be compensated with this, but it's just a decorative edge. It's not a covering edge. I love the fabric and I just wish it was longer. I now, by the way, understand this pattern because I could not wrap my head around how this was supposed to come together. And I, yeah, there were just, so where do I start? There were all kinds of things that went wrong with it. I think I used uh, 4.5 millimeter needles, which made this fabric also very dense and heavy, which was okay. But then I spun yarn that went into the flowers and those green sections and the yarn that I used for this was exquisite. It was a 50-50 merino silk hand spun and all the spinners will know what I'm talking about when I tell you this yarn wanted to be spun in a certain way. It ended up being very fine. And when I started the crochet, and I thought it was going to be fine because I thought, yeah, I'm going to have, um, I'm going to have the, the crochet sleeves. They're going to be very open fabric. Anyways, it won't matter. It can be lighter than the main fabric. But then it turned out that I would not have been able to finish everything 
if I had used it as a, the thin yarn that it ended up being. So what I did was, because I had nothing else in hand spun, I that had a silk content. And so I doubled the yarn, which was fine, but gauge, the gauge was just completely wrong. And you will know when I tell you, you will know what I'm talking about when I tell you that there should have been two flowers next to each other along this raglan edge. I don't even know. How can that then, now that I'm looking at it, how could it be then hug the shoulder properly? Oh, I don't know. So if I would do it again, I would knit the body in lighter yarn. I would do my crochet with thinner yarn and then have the two flowers here as per the pattern it should have been but then I would have an extra row of crochet flowers here, which would be needed then for, yeah, larger size. Yeah. Yeah. I made my daughter try it on today and for her, of course it's wide, but it's the length would be okay. She would wear it, but it's just, way too colorful for her, so she will never wear it. I'm not quite sure what I will do with it. I hope I'll find someone who who will love it. And, oh yeah, I think I used 4.5 millimeter needles and I did this. You saw I had a lot of fingerless mitts done. I did not count but I had planned to get that circle of mitts finished. I had already done a few ahead of time, but then I did not manage to um, finish the circle. I think four skeins were supposed to get knitted up and I missed those. So whatever, I didn't care so much. I had a lot of fingerless mitts and they were all beautiful. They were all made with hand spun yarn which everybody loves and I love. And I wanted to tell you, I had a lot of people participating in the Duke Mania 2022. Thank you for everybody who participated. Thank you for tagging your posts on Instagram. The giveaway has been going on in the Zia Wolves group on Ravelry. And that's where I have now closed the thread on December 3rd, as I told you, that's when it ended. And we had, let me see, we had 143 posts in that thread. However, of course, a lot of them were mine. I, in the end, I did not always comment anymore. I just gave a love tap to that, to the posts of the people who um, 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 entered there. But I, I loved them all. I mean, people had great ideas and they combined their leftovers and I think everybody had fun with me. And I had a total of 43, like I said, so let's do a giveaway for this hand spun yarn which is a 7030 BFL silk and it's a three ounce skein, which would give you a pair of fingerless mitts. So let me do this here on my iPad and let's see what happens. Pick a number between 2 and 43. Oh, never mind. The answer is 21. 
Pick a random number between 2 and 143. It's 109. Okay, let's see. It's 109. Let's see what 109. Petunia! And you showed your myths in a different post, which are which were in the 110 and maybe more, but you commented on another one's um, another knitter's post, which I also loved because I wanted to have everybody chat. And but I'm seeing that one entry of yours is just so beautiful. Look at that. I just loved these white ones with the speckled yarn and with the um, with the mohair or whatever you held with them. And if you participated, I hope you entered your Duke City Mitts as a project on Ravelry because that helps every designer out because then other people can see how the project looks like knitted up with different yarns. So, but Petunia, your post 110 was the one where you showed your mitts, but 109 is where you commented. So please get in touch with me and let me know um, where I can send your win to. I hope you like the colors. It's this dark, um, well, I don't want to tell you what colors they are because you can see it and I hope you will love your yarn. Congratulations! What is next? After, yeah, I kind of go in order a little bit. It's all been a lot that's been going on. So after Christmas, I after the studio tour open house, I um, I scheduled, that's the word, <laughs> I scheduled a dye class and it was my very first one. And I have to say, I was so excited about it. Once I had made up my mind that I want to do that, I was thinking about it a lot. I made my plans, what I wanted to talk about it. I came up with my handout and I um, thought about how I wanted to structure it. And we were dyeing a um, Christmas yarn, which, and the participants had the option of either doing exactly what I did or putting their own little spin onto it, which of course was also fun. And overall, I must say it was a small class and everybody, I dare say, had a lot of fun. And I hope that if this is something that interests you and if you're local, I hope that you're going to get on my mailing list on my website, Zia Wools, and um, that way you will be notified when something is going on, something like this. I will always send out a list to the subscribers. Really fun very very fun let me rearrange things a little bit but what is new let me grab all of my christmas bags i made a bunch of christmas bags they're all in the i mean not all those that are not sold are still in the shop this is one that i made for myself a long time ago I use this. Actually, no, not this one. This one is new. This has a vintage fabric on the inside. And this is my all-time favorite Christmas um, fabric, which is also vintage. Can't remember where I found that. And what's in here? Socks for my husband. Double knit. 
with 3.5 millimeter needles. I always say four times 12 stitches. That's how I start these guys. And uh, yeah, did a heel flap and gusset kind of thing. And I just finished them last night, so I still have to weave in the ends. I do not knit normal socks for him anymore. He wears them through in about two weeks. Made him some last year. They're already done, sadly. First Christmas project. Then I thought I have to knit a pair of Christmas socks. I just have to make some. I have Christmas yarn, why not? So I went to a box that has a sticker on it, seasonal yarn or something. And I found two that, no, I found three. And I really had such a hard time deciding. <laughs> oh. Jen, I don't know. I think this is a self-striping, is it? I don't know. This is by Marigold Jen and it's called Mary and Bright. And it is Marigold Jen. And I got this in November of 2016. What? <laughs> it's been a while. I got this baby in 2019. You're gonna say, what? Isn't that a Halloween yarn? No, it's called the, <laughs> I thought these were my readers. It's called, no, I can read this word. Juvenile Delinquent. A reference to the Grinch, of course. I love this yarn. Great dyer. And the same thing again. Oh. This is a Superwash Targi Nylon Blend, 90-10, four ounces. Very nice, love this, love the quality. A Little bit more, if you know what I mean. So these two, obviously you see, as you see, I did not use, but what I used was, ta -da. By Mint Rain Yarns. And I want to say that I have had this yarn the longest, but sadly I did not write it down. It is called Buddy the Elf. Now let your mind go to how that should or would look like. And then I will show you how the yarn looks like knitted up. Or let me show you the ball of yarn. Such a simple, amazing, amazingly designed yarn. And I remember I saw it, a, a friend was knitting with it and I, I thought I gotta, I gotta have this yarn. And then I ordered it to Sabrina. And, um, Oops, I just stabbed myself with a knitting needle. This is where I am right now. Not too, too far because other things then took over. Because you know, who was that? Who said that in their podcast? I forgot, somebody said that. Was it Sabina? I don't know, but I heard that in, a pod, in another podcast where she said, I know it was a woman, she said, all these holidays like Christmas and birthdays, they always come up so suddenly. <laughs> that's how I feel. Yeah, that's me to the T. 
So I started these kind of late, beautiful, beautiful. And I just got started on the heel flap because this all is stockinette. I usually mark the last round off the, the leg before I start the heel flap because I count my rows. That makes it easier, of course. 2.5 millimeter needles. Just got to keep knitting. That's all what I do with my tag. It's in here. And then another Christmas project. Oh, by the way, here. Another favorite, favorite one of mine. I love this so much. I feel like I have one more bag in the shop with this fabric and a bigger size. I love it so much. <laughs> oh, not available anymore. Yes. And then this is the last secret Santa in a bag project. And I hate to admit that I've given up on this one because I am trying to be very thorough and hmm. and to figure out the final version of this pattern and I am I, I, I'm just doing it myself and I don't have a tech editor so it takes a lot of attention and I am struggling with the wording of these mini cables but eventually I'll get to it but that's what gives me a lot of what it gives me <laughs> but let me show you where I am I wanted to make these for my daughter because she asked for them and she even picked this color and maybe I will get them done until she leaves for Paris on January 2nd <laughs> yes she does one semester abroad so she needs fingerless mitts doesn't she i know you will agree this is where i am right now and the pattern is not hard I just i keep thinking about this about the 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 how what the correct wording is and uh, the of the pattern and the, st the stitch pattern. So I'm on it. If you love these, I'm on it. Mine are done. I could wear them, but I'm not even doing that because I still have to finish this and I want to keep them pristine. So another project with the, my little strap and the matching yarn. But then here comes what I'm focusing on. I really, really want to get this done in two days. And this is for my daughter. And she will be going out tonight. Today is Friday, not tomorrow, of course. And um, if you're German, Austrian, European, French, Watching this today, you may not know that gifts are given on the 25th and not the way it is done in, I want to say, most Europe on the 24th. So that's until then I have time. But then again, I don't know, family is still gathering on the 24th, so I may not have a lot of knitting time. We'll see. We'll see what happens you it's it was just so interesting i had shown you in the yarn before it was this one called ice ice baby one of mine 
Initially, I had chosen my cozy yarn base in a DK, but then I switched to this worsted. It has a little bit more yardage. I thought it would help me out. Then I thought if I, if I want to get it done for Christmas, I will have to, I, I should probably buff up the yarn a little bit and so I can knit with bigger needles. I found a cone of what's probably a cotton blend in the garage, which means garage slash in my stash. This. I'm, I'm really thinking, it doesn't say anything. Wait, does it say anything? I always thought it was cotton. Pretty sure it is. Oh, oh cool. Wow, I didn't know that. I was never paying attention. Mm, it's 76 cotton and 24 acrylic. That's so cool. Wow. Made in the USA. Huh. Very cool. I probably thrifted that at some point. So I thought, ah, oh, they don't fit together at all, right? Everybody is baffled about this because wait for it. Ta -da. Does this look fabulous or does it look fabulous? I, I can really never get over how great this looks together. I never would have expected that. I, I just decided, okay, let's just knit a sample and see how it looks like. And I was really blown away. It's so great. So last night I, so I have four skeins of the, I had four skeins of the yarn and I am on the second two. I've knitted up half. This of course is a never ending. And I am using five millimeter needles and I am knitting the smallest size of the Il Grande Favorito by Isabel Kramer, which is a sweater pattern that I have made for myself. And I thought it's gonna be a great neutral one for her. I have modified a few things. I wanted it very wide and I wanted skinny sleeves. So I have both of those. I was uncertain about the neckline, so I'm done with that. And I know that now I can, I can just finish the sleeves and then I can knit everything that I have into the rest of the sweater. And I'm thinking I'm gonna make a very wide ribbing and probably the same on the sleeves, maybe, I think. And I'm thinking because the sleeves are quite narrow already, I'm thinking I'm not going to do any decreases, but have them kind of like be slightly open at the end here as they, as, as, as it happens then if I knit, when I knit straight. So very pleased with the neckline. I use five millimeter needles and that's why I'm, I'm, I'm I mean, it's totally off with, um, compared to Isabel's gauge. And that's why I'm knitting the size extra large. And uh, the for the neckline ribbing I use, I went down one needle size to 4.5 millimeter needles. And I knitted the neckline twice last night. First try did not work out. It was, I had two little stitches and it was kind of 
pulling together a little bit. So I'm, I had to do it again and fit in a few more stitches because I was not reading the instructions in the pattern because I modified it a little bit and went down a little bit lower. I should have done it from the get go. I didn't see that coming that it was already closing up here. Yeah. yeah. Anything else you need to know? Great pattern, as we know of all the Isabel Kramer patterns. Wish me luck. <laughs> you know, I'm good at deadlines. I'm a last minute person. I am a horrible procrastinator, which reminds me, that's why I always start last minute to make photo albums of our trips for my dearest husband. <laughs> That's what he wants for Christmas, so he can relive our travels. I have a one a more project that I am super excited about. So excited, in fact, that I had to already block the humble beginnings of it. Because I knew I was going to have to start with a sweater, but... Ah, oh, this is so gorgeous. Look at it. Oh my gosh. Remember my sweater? Yes, this is the shawl pattern that I already talked about a few episodes back. It's called Hope and Feathers by Mary Annarella. And she has two sweater patterns that utilize the same beautiful stitch pattern. One of them I've made and I love. This one, you may recall, I had already different yarn wound up. I was ready to go. And then I realized I could not make myself start on that. And in the end, I rewound that yarn into a skein. That's, I, I just like, like it better when it's in a skein. And uh, the reason was that the yarns that I had chosen, so one of them was more solid and one of them was more variegated. And I had the more solid one, of course, intended for the more solid sections <laughs> and to go in between uh, to, to, and to use, to, to go with the slip stitches here between the stripes. But then, the more solid yarn was the lighter one of the two and the more variegated one was darker. And I just could not make myself use a lighter yarn for this and the darker yarn for in between. It did not feel right, so whatever. Mental start over, and this is where I am right now. I'm using 3.5 millimeter stitches. I think she suggested a different needle size, but I just use what I like for my shawls. And for this yarn, I'm using Zia Wool's Sun Dancer. This colorway does not have a name yet. And it has not been turned into a recipe yet because it was a one-of-a-kind lucky dog initially but it will be a recipe because I think it deserves to be one and this is the one that I showed you last time there may be one last skein in the shop it is called desert vibes yeah, I dyed a lot of this. This is my colorway of the year 2022. Great color, I think. And yeah, I really wanted to, wanted to use it. So here it is. And like I said, this is already blocked. Sun Dancer has 465 yards and 80 20 or 75 25 superwash merino nylon so a nice weight 
for a shawl. Next, um, uh, mum, 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 mum. That's actually it. I was just gonna. Oh my goodness! I forgot that. Hold on. <laughs> How do I start this? I have a daughter who has visions. Now I have incorporated visions into my life. So my vision, after I saw a certain pattern, was to make a whole array of this in different colors, for my goddaughter and her sister. And I'm talking about this gorgeous pattern by Ducati. Katarina is an incredibly design, uh, incredibly talented designer, knitwear designer, and I just don't do color work socks, but the, color, the socks she has designed, check them out. You are going to be blown away. In fact, some of her mitts I put in my queue. So hopefully, <laughs> hopefully um, at some point I will get around to, to making them. Yeah, and this one, it's just a little shawl. And no, she has this has been around for a few thing, years and it has not just now been uh, designed it's i think she designed this in 2019 so of course what do you do when you're a dyer you think about what do you do what can you do if you want a rainbow of colors I don't even know if I maybe I'm going to be bored after one shawl but then again hey it was fun dyeing up the colors hopefully I'll make at least two little shawls scarves and um but I did bring you my favorite color that I dyed and I did want to tell you what did Katarina Mm. Oh, okay. 3.5 and 4 to 4.5 millimeters. Okay, that's... That'll work for this yarn because I, I think her yarn that she suggests is a little bit heavier than mine. I thought it was... Oh, I'm confused. Pardon me. I thought I read Erin Wade yarn, but she has a 50 grams with 100 meters, so that would be 100 grams that you use for one of the little shawls with 200 meters. And I have dyed up my cozy yarn, and because I love this so very much, and this doesn't happen all the time, but I immediately named this the Heartbreaker because I felt so hard for this yarn. Check it out. And do you see what I love about it? All these little speckles and the neon in there. Oh, I am so in love with this. Sorry, it's my own yarn, but yeah. So that's what I'm going to cast on very soon. And I think it's just the cutest little feature with the little leaves. And the pattern is, even though she is a German designer and um, the, the tr she translates Waldkind to kid of the forest, I would probably say forest child or so. I don't know but it doesn't matter. Her English is very good. So if that's your language, go for it. I'm sure we will have a blast. We should actually do a knit along. Why don't we? Knit alongs are so fun. And this is episode 100. 
So we should start a new knit along. Oh, I know what we do. We will do a cast on on the 25th Forest Child Knit Along Waldkind by Ducati up here. That's her name. And I will start a thread on Ravelry as soon as I can so we can have a proper little um, thread for another proper giveaway, maybe at the end of January or so. I brought two other yarns that I set aside for myself because I fell so hard for them. If you love them, there's very similar colorways at the yarn store in Knob Hill here in Albuquerque if you're local or you can call them and ask about the yarn. It is the Velvet by Sorry, that's my daughter's washer, load of laundry beeping in the background. Well, this is Velvet. It's a blend of baby Suri alpaca and silk, and I just love how these turned out. So these two are for myself, and I'm thinking about starting yet another shawl where I use different colors in combination with this that's my thought i'll see what happens and now i have come to the end i just can't do anything but to wish you a wonderful and peaceful and uh, calm and surrounded by love a wonderful merry christmas if you don't celebrate happy holidays have a good time and yeah, to all of you out, out there, I'm sending you much love and I will see you again in 2023. Bye, Merry Christmas. <laughs>